Today, just thought I'd do a tutorial on sequencing with the upper body. It's something we see a lot of. You'll have noticed it on the channel all the time. You've probably recognized it in your own game too. Moving as a block. So, the club, the wrist, the arm, or the arms should I say, and the shoulders, torso, are all moving together, which really compromises the sequence because in a sequence, the pelvis, in terms of golf, rotates first in the downswing, then the torso, then the hands. And sequentially, it increases in angular velocity. So the pelvis is only rotating a handful of, well, it's, it's radians per second, but in miles per hour, say, say a handful of miles per hour. So it might only be, say, four or five miles per hour, okay? The torso's rotating faster, and the hands are kind of 20 miles per hour, say. And the hands are then going to have to stop and let the club accelerate. So as the, club as the hands decelerate, the club accelerates. So we've got to sequentially increase the speed through the system. But the problem is, if the hands and the arms are moving together with the torso, we've got to apply excessive force with the torso. And therefore, the pelvis too, everything has to move excessively because it's a big lump of mass now that's all been adjoined. So everything has to move together. We're having to create a lot of angular momentum from here. And in turn, that slows the hands down now because the hands are limited by how fast the torso rotates. And the hands, therefore, where they should be speeding up, are probably accelerating, but nowhere near as fast. It throws all our timings and timing sequences out and we lose the lag. Everything's rotating way too early, way too much, and we're not getting the resultant hand speed. And therefore, because we've not rotated efficiently and probably not using the ground in the right way, we can't create the braking forces to slow the hands down and speed the club up. So everything just continues at a very kind of slow rate in terms of what it could be. So the first thing we need to do... Hi guys, we're going back to Turkey, to the glorious Serenity Resort. It's a five-star golf resort and we're there in April from the 21st to the 24th. It's four days of coaching and playing with myself and Fars and one of the GRF staff and five nights at the fantastic Serenity Five Star Resort. If like me, you're fancying a bit of guaranteed sun, be sure to join us, but be quick because there's one space left and we hope to see you join the group. We need to find out how we can transfer momentum from the body to the club. So we're gonna look at the shoulder, the arm, the club. To do that, what I'd like you to do is take your uh, trail hand, so right hand for me is right hand there. All I'm going to do is just roll the shoulder and just shrug it up and just roll it back. Big circles. And then I'm going to let the elbow move too, so I can feel the shoulder, the elbow, and then we're going to start to let the wrist deviate. So wrist cocking effect, it gets thrown up. So it's like cracking the whip upward. And then I'm gonna use something like a balance pad. You can use like a cushion or anything soft. Just be careful what you use. And I'm just gonna feel what it's like to reverse it and generate some force effortlessly. So gripping a bit lower down the club, I'm just gonna stand there and just use the shoulder first. And just let the club accelerate naturally under its own weight. So we've got this free-flowing chain. And if you want, right at the end, you can have a little bit extra. Right at the end there. Now this is in the sagittal plane. Facing you here, forwards. In golf, we're not striking like this, but this is a more powerful action to create force than this. So using this radial and ulnar deviation, which is wrist cocking effect, in this vertical plane, that's where we get our power from. And by using the shoulder first here, we're creating momentum and we're transferring it through the elbow, through to the wrist, through to the club. But in golf, we're swinging around the body, it's on an inclined arc. So there's other dimensions to this we need to consider. So instead of it being in this plane, we're gonna rotate this 90 degrees and go horizontally. 
But notice the shoulder goes first, then the elbow, then the wrist, then the club. Now we're not rotating the face, we just you it would be if this was a golf shot, you'd be hitting it out of the hosel and shanking it. But what we're feeling now is a change of direction of this chain here, which is more representative of the direction we're swinging in golf. And feeling how it's generated from here. We're not talking about the rest of the body yet, we're just talking about the upper chain here, the very end of the chain, the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist, the club. And just throwing it from the shoulder, both to the right, backward, trail side first. So that's scapular retraction. This is working. To throw it back. And then scapular protraction, it goes forward. So we're using the shoulder girdle, the mobility of the shoulder girdle. It's a very free moving joint and it really is important for creating energy and transferring energy. So here we've got this kind of 90 degree rotated club but we're using the shoulder. Notice the lag. Shoulder, elbow, wrist, club. Okay now we know in a golf shot we've got to square the face and that's where the rotation of the shaft comes. So we can feel that in the motion. Start with it at nine, tilted 90 degrees away, and then just feel yourself square it up. It's the same with the left arm. So the lead arm, rolling the shoulder, feel the chain. What you might find yourself doing at first is this. Really rigid with the wrist, the arm and the club almost become one, because we've spent most of our life trying to control the club. And the problem we've got is that that's how we recognise how we move the club. And we're using the same movement patterns and trying to adapt them to create some kind of chain. But we haven't really got the awareness for breaking up this chain, for using these joints independently and then creating a sequence with them. But this exercise here, rolling the shoulder, let the elbow bend, let it fold, let it flex and extend and then let the wrists go too and then let the club react and then throw it up to the shoulder. And just wait for it and then at the end if you want right at the bottom add a bit of extra force but not from here that's the with rotation that's this action once we start using the shoulder you can see what's happening here shoulder elbow wrist this is going to be behind the pivot in terms of the center of rotation so we can throw the weight in a golf swing and accelerate it once this moves out in front, oh, it's all hard work. So the club has to come from behind the body. So this is a sequence that's gonna enable that to happen and let your body work more efficiently. Turn the club 90 degrees. It's almost like you're throwing the shoulder back and through. So you can feel this shoulder movement. Rotate the torso a little bit to get a bit of momentum. And then throw the shoulder first. Let the arm bend, don't worry about it. In a golf swing, that's not gonna happen. Because you're gonna be rotating the club too. And the weight's gonna be accelerating away from you. And it's gonna be straightening your arms for you, for free. All we've got to do first is feel this effortless flow. And then you, right at the end, you can start to feel the rotation of the face. Start with it laid flat like that, horizontal. So normal grip then rotate the wrist, rotate the forearm. Don't just rotate the club, we want to rotate the wrist because now we're starting to tap into all the different planes available. So it can really work more efficiently. And then, let it rotate at the end. Start there and rotate it through. Both hands on. Now how do we get these moving? We rotate the torso. There, see the rib cage rotates first. Then the club gets thrown. Then we rotate the rib cage back to the target first. I just do these as kind of independent reps. I build it up first, get some swinging action, and then when you feel the timing's right, when you swing the club forward, get ready to rotate first with the rib cage back, and then back through to the target and hold your finish. The inside swings the outside. Watch. So you can see there's a whip-like effect that's originating with this torso movement and everything follows. And then it's a case of trying it with a golf ball. And what I suggest you do is just 
do some half, three quarter swings, have a practice swing. Now from the ground, we've got to get super active with the rib cage and super late with the club. So the arms and the club are reacting to the rib cage. Just watch when you see the players in slow motion on tour. A lot of them, you'll see the body moving. They're almost like micro moves. And then you'll see they're moving and then they're creating some kind of initiating movement with the body and then the club reacts. Even the guys who take it away early with the wrists, you'll see how super quick they rotate and use their body because they are sequencing on the way back. They're all different, there's no right or wrong, but there is a transfer of momentum that is efficient so they're not compromising their downswing. Once the backswing's overly tensioned, it's hard to switch tension off, it's hard to find that sequence because it's compromised, because the, the structure is so rigid. So we've got to create a fluid and maintain a fluid form. So it's the, the big segments are throwing the smaller segments, but those segments have got to be able to react through a free joint action. So that means the end of the chain, going back and going through, is always last. And just see what it's like hitting a few shots. Just try it. There, chest goes early. Not trying to play any particular kind of specific shot, it's just a more of an internal awareness here, just to enhance our self-awareness of what it's like to sequence with the rib cage first. Then you can start to build it up, and then you can start to integrate more of the, the body movement. I actually like the step drill with this because I like to get the momentum from the ground up. So I'd start with the feet together, only taking half a step each way so you end up with a full stance width by the time you're swinging and striking the ball. Start with the feet together, trail foot goes back, just half a step, then it's rib cage to throw the arms. And as soon as the club's getting accelerated up, you take a step to the left, just half a step, and swing through. So now you're starting to initiate this from the ground with this lateral force. Just half swings, or three quarter swings in this case, and just playing around with the initiation of your action using that momentum, that transfer of momentum. That's going to help you with your weight transfer, it's going to help you with your braking forces, it's going to help you initiate the sequence, and it's going to help you let the end of the chain react. And all along the way, just letting this swing freely, so we're continually reinforcing that feeling of effortlessness and using the swing weight. So guys, I hope you find that useful. Get yourself to the practice ground. Feedback in the comments below on how you're getting on. Any questions, again, drop them in the comments. Good luck and keep us up to date with the progress.